Well, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, Web Summit. How's everyone doing? Oh, that was very weak. Uh, we won't do that again. Um, it's fantastic to see you all here. Thank you for joining us. We have an amazing panel on stage today. I'm the kind of moderator that likes people to introduce themselves. It's much more emotional that way. So, starting with Mada. Uh, Mada, please tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Mada. I'm one of the founders of a company called Branch. We're a mobile linking solution. Um, we've been around for about three years raised over 100 million in funding. I lead the growth at Branch. I'm also originally from Romania. I grew up in communism. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I end up going to the States by myself. I got a full scholarship um, and then stayed. And you know, I don't think ever growing up, I ever imagined that I would start a company with 150 people. So maybe that's my story. Fantastic. Oh. My name is Hope Solo. I played football for the United States for close to 20 years. Um, I played in a handful of Olympics, a couple World Cups, and now I'm fighting for equal pay. Superb. Hi, I'm Kurt Cronin. I spent the first 13 years of my career in the Navy SEALs, where I got a passion for building teams. I've now transitioned to now building teams in the business world with uh, my company, Kaizen International. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. And we're here to talk about winning. Um, winning is very important in business. And we have to feel you know, that uh, when we go into business, we're going to win in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we have to beat our competition. Uh, we have to find ways to make sure that we can pay for all those wonderful people that we hire, all of those resources that we have. So let's talk about the concept of winning. I mean, winning doesn't happen until we actually fail and learn from that first, right? So let's talk about, before we get to winning, Let's talk about some of the failures that you've had as you've gone along this journey. I mean, Mada, what are some of the things that you've learned uh, from the failures that you've had along your journey towards winning? I think to just keep trying. So uh, Branch is actually our fourth idea. So my co-founders and I first started doing Fitbit for dogs. Uh, and then we built an app and then a printing SDK and we kept failing and I think I remember all our friends were like Oh my god, you guys like just give up You know go and go and work for someone else like you've been you've been failing a lot uh, But then we started branch out of actually all the problems we had as app developers building an app so I You know the advice I give to startups out there is always to just keep trying. It's okay to fail uh, every lesson that you get while you fail will help you to be better the next time. Uh, and you know, after four tries, we actually found something that resonates. So, What's the difference between um, just failing constantly and, and never learning from it? I mean, is data a big part of this? Do you always look at the KPIs, metrics? You know, are there things that you keep your eye on so that you know exactly why you failed? Yeah, I w yes, data is definitely important. But data only helps you understand how to do better at the same problem. Um, I think a lot of it, you actually build intuition. So one of the things we didn't quite understand is how do you build a product that has product market fit? Um, and going and trying to sell very different products helped us understand that when we were starting Branch that the way people responded to Branch meant we were onto something. Um, and that was actually intuition. Same with like interviewing. We sucked at the beginning when we started hiring people, and we, you know, a lot of the, our early hires didn't work out, and we became a lot better. And that's something, there's, there's something that's said that if you do something enough, if you do it a thousand times, uh, you actually build intuition and you become better at it the more you practice. So part of it is obviously conscient, like you look at data and you understand your mistakes, but part of it is the, every time you fail, your body learns and your mind learns to be, to be better. I mean, Hope, there's, there's a lot of parallels between the world of tech and, and the world of sports. I mean, in particular, you know, soccer is, is one of those sports where it's almost impossible to win all of the time. There's, there's always got to be times when you're not winning. You know, what is it that you learn from those times, and how do you take that forward? Well, I was cut from the 1999 World Cup team. And I got back on the horse, and I said, OK, I'm going to make the 2000 Olympics. And then I got cut from the 2000 Olympics. So the next major tournament wasn't until 2003, the next World Cup, and I got cut from that team as well. 
And so constantly my coaches would say, you have the potential to be the best goalkeeper in the world. And at that point in time, I was sick and tired of hearing the word potential because I wanted to be great in that moment, on that day. And it got to the point where I wasn't making a great living financially, so I said, all right, I either need to be realistic with myself or I need to continue to go after my dream, but I can't really afford to do so. So I gave it one last shot. I went overseas to play. I was done kind of with American football at that time because I had been cut. And I gave it one last chance. And that chance, I was less serious about the pressures of making the World Cup and the Olympics. And I just felt the purity of the sport and the passion and the love of the game. And I played my best football I had ever played. And then I was a part of the 2004, that following year, Olympic Games in Greece. So I have failed numerous times. Um, I actually finished my career, I was close to the end of my career, not knowing if I would ever win the World Cup. And when I was 12 or 13 years old, my teacher had said, it was an assignment for all of us, said, write a paper about what you want to be when you grew up. And I wrote, I remember it was in pencil, it's, it's single spaced, double spaced, and it's all big writing. And I said, when I grow up, I want to be a professional soccer player. But at that time in the 80s, there was no women's professional soccer. So I like to say that I dreamt beyond what was even possible at that point in time. I became a professional soccer player, but my one goal was to win a World Cup because everybody knows in, in football and soccer, the World Cup is the grandest of stages. So in 2000, well, 2007, it was a disastrous World Cup for us in China. 2011, we were so close. We were so close. We made it to the final against Japan. We had a, two different leads in the game, and we ended up letting Japan get back into the game. They scored one goal, tied it back up, we scored another, went up, and then they scored again in the final minutes of the game and took us to penalty kick shootout. In that moment, I couldn't believe that we, had, we were losing this game, that we let them back in it. And it was the most heartbreaking experience I had ever had because we were so close to tasting victory, which was my lifelong dream since I was 12 years old. And I tasted victory, I really did. I saw the clock winding down, we were still ahead at that point in time, and I, I tasted it. And then at the end of the game, we went home and Japan had won. And at that point in time, I wondered if I would ever be able to fulfill my lifelong dreams of winning a World Cup. 2015, we won the World Cup eventually. Right. <laughs> Exactly. It's a, it's a fascinating journey and as, as you say, there's a lot of uh, different points of failure until you get to, to that win. I mean, Kurt, talk to us about that and about the psychology of that in terms of you know, what failure does to us uh, as we go on this journey for, for winning. And I think that's one of your key components because failure can do one of two things, right? I love the word crisis. It's either danger and opportunity. So I can either take failure as, hey, that's permanent, pervasive, and permanent, and now it sets the conditions where I now shrink back, or I can say, just like they both talked about, I can lean in and say, wow, what did I learn from this? And everything I learned makes me stronger. You know, I, my first combat operation, I thought everything must go perfect if everybody comes back alive. And everything went, went to complete pandemonium, but the whole mission was, hey, what can we learn? And so every single time we come back, and we, after action review, immediately to follow, we check our ego at the door and say, okay, what did we learn from this? Because it's crucial, you never know if you're going back out in five minutes, 10 minutes, or the next night, how do we get better? And how do we help the entire team get better? And how do we evolve as fast as we possibly can? Talk to me a little bit about, you, know, you, you said something there that was kind of interesting, perfection. So in my world, which is you know, marketing technology and AI and AR and VR and blockchain and all these things, you know, people are producing apps all the time, they're launching apps all the time. There are 300 apps, legitimate apps, launched every single day on the app stores. So the, the need for the app to be perfect when it comes out of the gate is really high, because otherwise people will just uninstall it very quickly. But, but what does perfection do for winning? Because perfection is, is actually quite dangerous, isn't it? Well, I would say perfection is the lowest standard you can hold in life. Like anything I could do perfectly is something that I, I'm wasting my time because it's not at my potential. Anything that's worthwhile is worth spending a lifetime mastering. And so it's how do I evolve every single day? And to your point, how do I get to a certain level before I launch? How do I get to a certain level before I go on a combat operation? How do I get to a certain level before I go on a hostage rescue mission? So you evolve and continuously hit new levels, but everything that's worth doing is worth mastering, worth continuously trying to get to the next level. So, you know, we've, we've gone through the journey. We've, uh, we've failed. We've learned. We've put our little baby steps in place. We're making our way to that uh, level of winning. Now, there's a mentality that winners have 
And you know, Matt, we were talking backstage. You know, you uh, you love it when you go and sort of beat the competition, right? What's that? What's that mentality like? Tell me about that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a very competitive person. So actually, for me, if we had no competition, I wouldn't find it challenging. I think the mentality is, you know, you are in the game, and there's others in the game, and. Uh, I, I actually like I always root for the underdog. I like when I'm the underdog because there's just something magical to me about going after something that seems completely impossible. I think everyone has something that drives them. And for me, I remember when I was writing my essays for business school, I said what's most important in life is this ability to go after things that seem impossible and just actually try to do them. And Many of the things in my life, you know, going to the States seemed impossible, starting a company seemed impossible, c coming from my background. But there's something, and then I've also failed, like I've gone after things that seemed impossible, and I, I didn't get it there. But just to, to go after things and just try, uh, there's nothing, you know, being okay with failure and just keep trying, I think that's the, the mentality. Uh, and seeing others that are trying the same thing and, and actually enjoying competition, I think, uh, Makes it makes it easier to be in the game. And and hope. I mean that that mentality um, in the tech world is very similar to the sports mentality. You know, wanting to to compete, wanting to win all the time. Um, where does that come from? Does that come from what you said earlier in terms of like letting go and just going back to the passion of the sport, or is there more to it than that? Well, I did strive to be perfect. It wasn't um, not a worthy enough cause, um, but. That's why I loved goalkeeping, is because you, goalkeeping is a position of failure. You get scored on time and time and time again. And so how do you deal with that failure? I would watch video, I would watch my training, I would watch every single goal, I would watch every defender's positioning. And I had to turn my very raw athleticism into a, into a very intellectual game that I played in the goal. And that was what made me good, is a lot of people just think I had the athleticism and the raw talent. But to get myself to become better, I had to study every nuance of the position and every nuance on the game. And it became my life, a lifetime of work for me. At, I guess not quite lifetime, but I'm still pushing women's goalkeeping forward. But I think what's important for me is it was never, yes, innately I was competitive. Innately I wanted to win. I had a, a passion in me from a very young age to be the best. But over time, I wanted to do more with that. I couldn't just just play for myself. That's a very selfish way, and I don't think you're going to be as successful. And I've played with many teammates who only play to wear the United States shield on their chest. To me, that's not a good enough reason. To me, you want to play for an accumulation of what you've been through in life, whether it's your struggles and the challenges and overcoming them, whether it's to prove to the world that women's goalkeeping can be respected. And oftentimes in the men's game, they didn't think women's goalkeeping was good enough, and that's what ruined the game of soccer. So I always had more to prove and more to show, and I wanted to build the women's game for the young girls that are, that are coming up in the ranks. So it became this, this bigger concept for me about competing. I wanted to make the world a better place. I wanted to give young girls better opportunities. I wanted to fight for equal pay, which is law in America. I wanted to represent my best self for my family, for my country. Yes, for myself as well, but it wasn't merely for myself. And that's what continued to make me compete, become a winner, and, and get better at what I was doing. Fantastic. I mean, Kurt, tell, tell us about the traits there for, for people that want to win. Is it something that you are born with, or is it something that you can learn? I mean, is, is it something that everybody here could go away, study, and become winners? I think it's something that's innate to all of us. You know, I think you know, we all think that someone has to have genius, but genius, I think, is evolved based on purpose. And so it really comes down to, I love your conversation about how that purpose continues to evolve. And is a purpose, it's got to be something so compelling that not only drives me, but then I can align an entire team around it. Like the SEALs, we were never weaker than when we were only the SEALs. Because now if you open the toolbox and all you have is a hammer, the whole world looks like nails. When we really got amazing was now we had the CIA and the State Department, every different component integrated in because now you had all this vast capability you never had otherwise. And because we found a meta purpose we could all align to and that set the conditions where you could win at a totally different level. Because to be, you, know, you started out, we talked about, we think of competition, as winning is beating, beating someone else. But the true winning is when we can integrate and now we're all pulling the same direction. And that's where you get that true power and the, the real energy. And that's where I think 
the startups that win are the ones that can say, here's what we're all doing together. It's not my project or your project, it's our project. And that's where the true winning comes from. Absolutely. In fact, great metaphor for soccer because soccer is never about the one person on the team. It's about the entire team. And it's about the entire team behind the scenes as well because without them, the team couldn't do their job, right? No? I mean, it's, it's about everybody, the ones that are behind the scenes. It's, I like to think of soccer and uh, management as a nice metaphor for each other because you, know, you, you hire your, your goalkeeper, which in a, a business sense might be the customer service team. Mm -hmm. And uh, the defenders might be the administration team. And you go through to the attackers who are the salespeople. And the manager doesn't run out and put the ball in front of people and then say, right, kick it that way. They hire the right people and say, go do your job. And they f have the right environment for them. Um, hey, uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to ask a question. So you've got the Slido app. If you want to throw a question up, you can do that now. Whilst you're doing that, um, let's just quickly do a, a round robin. Uh, just for 30 seconds each. You know, if you want to get started with a winning mentality, what is the first thing that you should focus on? What's the very, very first thing that you should focus on to get started and build that winning mentality? Matt, what's your thought? I think to just do things. Um, the main, you know, I, I talk to a lot of a lot of potential founders or or uh, startups who have ideas. And they spend so much time just talking about their ideas and talking and asking others. And that's important. But I think they start winning the moment they actually start implementing something and building something and trying something out, no matter how imperfect it is, no matter they'll get feedback. And building things helps you like just get closer to winning and getting yeah. that positive feedback. Um. I think if you're trying to get a job with a high profile company just to work for that company, then you're not going to be successful. I think you have to find something that you're truly passionate about. Go back to the, you know, the lifelong adage of being passionate. Find what you're passionate about. I believe in that. But I also believe that you have to find reasons that will make the world a better place and bring good to the world. You can't just work in your office and consider yourself successful because you work for a great company. You have to do more. You have to bring people together. You have to bring the world together. And for me, I think that will help bring success because you're going to find reasons that inspire you as well as others, and that will bring passion. Kurt, I'm going to ask you one of the questions um, on the Slido. Uh, you know, at what point do you know that an idea has truly failed? Which I think is a great question. I think it's a great question. I don't know that there's a, a quantifiable answer for that. For me, it's, is it working or not? And if not, then how do I iterate? So, you know, it, that one's one that assumes like a zero or one answer. I love the yes and. Like, it's not working in its current form. What's the two millimeter shift? What's the tweak I could make to possibly make this work next? And that's why we love evolutionary, not revolutionary change, right? If this idea is not working in the current state, what are the 10 things I could try? And let me try those 10, and then w of those, which one starts to momentum, and where do I go next? So to me, it's being clear on what's working, what's not, and then continues to iterate. Perfect. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I've been winning the entire time by having uh, Mada, Hope, and Kurt up here on stage. Please give them a warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.